She's an incredible force in producing and nurturing some of the most acclaimed documentaries of our time, whether at PBS's POV or in her current position running the Sundance Institute's documentary program. And she's the woman who holds the fate of your entire professional life in the palm of her hand. <laughs> yeah. Tara Mertes. So be nice. Be yeah. really nice. Thank you all for coming. So to talk about inspiration, first off, what are these inspirations that bring us into this very strange world we call the independent documentary field, where you do insane things for no money for long periods of time? Um, and we really all fit into that category of you can't not do it, otherwise why would you do it? Um, and I know enough people in this room to know that that's really true and that was also true for me. I grew up in Kansas. Uh, I grew up poor in Kansas. And I tell you that because you should know I have no connections when I was young. <laughs> I came from the Midwest. I came from a family that had nothing to do with film. Um, and sort of have found my way, you know, through moving to the East Coast, now on the West Coast. So I've been lucky enough uh, to be in this field for about 20 years and to see several sort of waves and several revolutions in a certain way and really privileged to be in a position of programming and of funding and of curating and, and, and then executive producing and producing and working with a lot of different people over time. But, you know, part of the reason I wanted to go back in the chronology is not, you know, because my life is so interesting, but because, you know, when I came to Sundance, one of the reasons that I came is because it is the place that, along with public television and HBO, those are really the three places that have really championed independent documentary in a major way for multiple decades. So moving to Sundance for me was not that much of a stretch because I saw how Redford himself um, has been very consistent about his support, and Jeff Gilmore was programming the festival for 20 years, really understood what it meant to give an even playing field to documentary. And everybody at Sundance, and certainly our department, we sort of live and breathe not only what documentary can be, but what it's been. So the conversations that are held about film always refer to what other people have done. I mean, when you sit and listen to the programmers talk, they know their stuff. They know all about film. They know about film history. They know what different artists have been doing. They know what directors are doing. They know what they're thinking about. They have ideas about the trends. When we're talking about documentary, it's a really wide-ranging discussion. It doesn't just rest on what your film is and what the idea is. There's a much wider context that we hope is informed that comes into play. Because you have a specific mandate, yeah. what are some of the other places to go with films that don't fit your mandate? Right. Well, you know, I have to say social justice and social issue filmmaking is kind of the hot number right now right. because impact is attached to it and that's what foundations like and that's what individual donors like. They like to see something happen with the film, uh, the film that they're supporting. Now, the question for me, I suppose one answer is we're not seeing enough experimental filmmaking right now because people aren't funding it. So that is a whole arena that, that we, you know, might have been seeing more of, but now we're definitely not seeing. Thank you so much. Thank I mean, you guys. Really That's great.